today on What's Next. You don't know about tomorrow. You can't worry about yesterday. It's just to live me life. I regret not telling people how I feel about them. I regret all sorts of things. It's okay, but I'd rather not have them. No regrets is not a sign of courage. What's courage is staring your regrets in the eye and doing something about them. Hello and welcome to what we hope will be another inspirational, motivational, and aspirational episode of Growing Boulders What's Next. I'm Mark Middleton. Our mission here is really very simple, to help you make the rest of your life the best of your life by sharing the examples of others that you can relate to. Here now is the What's Next storytelling team. Award-winning broadcast journalist is where they all begin, but who knows where they're all going to end because they like all of us are on a journey of discovery and what a ride it's been for cecily wilson amy sweezy and bill schaefer all spread out through gbhq and today we're talking about regrets and one of my favorite songs guys is the iconic 1969 hit my way in which frank sinatra sang regrets i've had a few but then again too few to mention and i think that's the goal for all of us and the good news is we still have time to act so we also have too few to mention and amy let me start with you what's something you acted on this year that you're glad you did you know i actually stole this one from a growing boulder fan because i'm i'm positive that i got this from the growing boulder facebook and that is that someone said they were going to make a list of their year of firsts and make this their year of first. So I started a list and I'm keeping track of all of the first time I'm doing something this year. So whether that's travel, whether that's a restaurant, um, I have added to that list a trip to Charleston, which I had never been to before. And our family just went recently and did a little uh, little couple of days vacation in Charleston. That's awesome, Amy. In fact, that's step one in the regret avoidance playbook, so you're well on your way already. You know, it's funny to talk about regrets because most people say that you can only really regret the things you don't do. I'm not so sure about that. You know, there's a musician out there who's hoping to avoid regret in general. Do you remember the band Badfinger? In the 1960s, they were chosen by the Beatles to sign with Apple Records. They had huge hits like Come and Get It but everything fell apart. They had legal roadblocks, mismanagement like you can't believe, and broken friendships, and in the end, two of the members took their own lives. And now, the last survivor of the band, Joey Molland, has vowed to play their music as long as he can to keep the legacy of Badfinger alive. Joey Molland wasn't just in a band, he was in Badfinger chosen by the Beatles as one of the first and most successful to be signed by Apple Records. Yeah, the new Beatles, these, these are, this is what the Beatles would sound like if they got this sh- together. <laughs> That's what they wrote about us, man. But after three top 10 hits and 14 million records sold, the band was broke, swindled by their manager, causing their lead singer and songwriter to take his own life. Badfinger tried to carry on, but the legal battles were overwhelming when unthinkably another member killed himself too. Yeah, it was, it was really sad. He called me uh, the day before or two days before. We had an argument on the phone. He wanted to fight. There was a stack of royalties in the bank in London and uh, he was blaming somebody or the other person uh, for it being there. Man, it was... Uh, Yeah, it was a disaster. It was a complete disaster for us. Molland was devastated. He felt that somehow it was on him to pick up the pieces, to carry on, to tell their story, and to keep the music of Badfinger alive. And at the age of 74, instead of winding down, Molland is ready to turn it up. That's what I'm doing today, I'm just carrying on with that. Uh, we're going, we're hoping to go on tour yeah, next year or so, and uh, we're hoping that people will enjoy the stories, and uh, we're going to talk about John Lennon and all that, you know. You don't know about tomorrow. Uh, you can't worry about yesterday. Uh, you've got to live today, uh, uh, and I'm trying to be trying to be smart now, aren't I? But 
It's just to live my life. And I don't want to screw anybody. I want to be square with people. I want to tell the truth to people uh, that I feel, that, or what I think about this or that or the other. Um, so that, that's how I live my life, you know? Yes, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Bill. What an amazing journey and a fascinating insight at a legendary band. And obviously nobody could fault Joey Mullen for calling it quits for any one of a number of things a number of times. But here he is still touring, still making music, not only delighting his many fans, but also helping himself recover. So, you know, what do you take away, Bill, from knowing Joey? Uh, what's the message beyond just keep rocking? You know, Mark, for all they've been through, he is still so upbeat. He loves people, loves the story of the band, and just wants to spread it. But the biggest thing of all is that, what, what did he say? He goes, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't do anything to fix yesterday. Live in the present. Make today the best you can make it. And isn't it amazing that, it, that it's music that keeps him going? It, it's you know creative engagement that's so important to all of us. So, so how about you guys? How do you use the power of music or any other creative outlet when things get different? Cecily? Yeah, for me, it is music. It's gospel music. And, and when things are really, really tough with me, there are a few of the songs that I really go to and I lean on and just kind of help reinvigorate my spirit or encourage me or just give me that hope in, of inspiration that moves me along. So it's that music that makes me, uh, that makes my heart sing. I actually enjoy art and I draw. I'm not very good, uh, but I took some lessons back when I was younger. And so drawing, getting out the pencil and the paper, it allows my brain to focus on that as opposed to focusing on what may be a difficult time. And that way I can just kind of calm myself and pour my energy into something else. Amy, you and I are similar in yet another way that I, I, I didn't really know before. Now, I like to paint. Uh, I don't do it often enough. Uh, but what I like about it is how quickly the world just goes away. It is always a very quick path to an alternate reality, if you will, to mindfulness. Uh, it accomplishes, I think, in a very positive and healthy way what many people turn to alcohol and drugs for. It's a great escape. You know, both of you made a great point there, and I'd like to add to that, that that music allows you to paint with emotion. And the one thing I'd love to leave everybody with, don't think of music as a spectator activity. It's not about putting the headphones on and listening. Don't forget about making your own music. Get out there and live as large as you can. I regret all sorts of things, and it's okay, but I'd rather not have them. Welcome back to What's Next as we continue our chat about regrets. And someone who knows more than most about regrets is Valerie Bertinelli. She, of course, is the award-winning actress uh, who didn't love her back in the 70s and 80s in One Day at a Time. Uh, she's now a TV host with the Food Network and a best-selling author. But it hasn't always been easy for her. She recently joined Growing Boulder Radio to talk about her new book, Enough Already, Learning to Love the Way I Am Today. And she did open up about the death of her first husband, Eddie Van Halen, the difficult times caretaking for her mother in her final years, and much more. Here's Valerie's take on regrets and how we can all learn from them. I don't agree with the phrase, I, ha a phrase, I have no regrets, it's made me who I am. Um, regrets or yes, they have made me who I am, but I, I would rather learn and not have the regrets. I, 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 I regret not opening up my mouth more and, and asking my mom more questions. I regret, like I say in the book, that I didn't hug Ed more when I could see that he wanted it. I regret all sorts of things. Um, I regret not telling people how I feel about them so that they know how much I absolutely love them, because what if it's the last time I ever see them? I'm grateful that I was able to tell Ed I love him before he had his final stroke so that he knew those were the last words. You know, I love you, I'll see you tomorrow were the last words he heard from me. But there are so many other regrets that I have, and it's okay, but I'd rather not have them. I'd rather do things so that I don't have to have regrets. And if I can teach people how not to have them and to say the things that they don't have to have them, then I'm here for that. 
A powerful take from Valerie Bertinelli, and of course we all wish that we didn't have regrets, but having them is really what keeps us from having more in the future. I think regrets are kind of a form of higher education. They are lessons learned. So guys, I, I kind of feel like a therapist now. Let's share our regrets and embrace them for the moment. Amy, what's a regret that you currently have that you're willing to share? I got my first undergrad degree in journalism, and then when I went back to school the second time to study meteorology, I took all of those classes, but I never got that second bachelor's degree. I was just a few classes short, and I never did it, and I always wished I would have. So that's kind of a big regret that, that I wish I would have done differently. It's, you know, talking to, never knowing if it's the last time you're gonna see somebody. I think we've kind of hit the age now that was never possible before. You know, you'd hear people say that, but you know, 2030, nothing's gonna happen. We're stepping into that area now where I've lost one of my parents already. I, I don't know, my mom's 95, um, and so many friends, you know? So I do go out of my way now to try to tell people how I feel about them. Uh, now that I'm a grandmother and my, my granddaughter, and I, she calls me Gina, but Gina's baby is my heart and I wish I had more time with my grandmother. My grandmother died at an early age and I really didn't get a chance to really embrace all that I know that I could, could have with her. And so I want to make every moment with Gina's baby that I absolutely can. I have to say, I already regret that I don't have a better answer for this, uh, but, but I will say this. I regretted not communicating more with my grandparents, and because of that, and, and really, I felt selfish about this, I made sure that I would never regret not saying things to my parents, and I do feel really good about that now that, uh, you know, it's been eight or ten years since they've both been gone. No regrets is not a sign of courage. What's courage is staring your regrets in the eye and doing something about them. Welcome back to Growing Boulders, What's Next? Daniel Pink is a New York Times best-selling author. He's got some very interesting takes on life. His latest book is The Power of Regret, How Looking Backwards Moves Us Forwards. We had a great conversation about regrets as a good thing and how having regrets can actually help us figure out what's next in our lives. We have this philosophy of no regrets and it's a bad philosophy. It's not an effective blueprint for living. It makes some intuitive sense, like, oh, why, why invite pain when you can avoid it? But, um, but here's what 50 years of science tells us. Everybody has regrets. Everybody has regrets. Regrets make us human. Um, it's one of the most common emotions that we have. And you have to ask yourself, if this thing that's a little bit painful is so common, what's the point? Why does it exist? It's because regrets make us better. Regrets are our most useful emotion if we deal with them properly. If we get beyond the crappy advice that you got and say, no regrets is not a sign of courage. What's courage is staring your regrets in the eye and doing something about them. So if you have a regret about not being bolder, maybe you stayed in a job you didn't like and didn't start a business, you still have a shot in your 60s, in your 70s to do a side hustle, to do something else. So listen to that regret, it's instructive. If you have regrets about not reaching, and I have so many sad stories here of people who wanted to reach out to friends and then the friends pass away. Reach out to people now uh, as, you get, as you get older, you're not gonna regret that. And so what I want people to do is in some ways sort of forgive themselves for having regrets, treat themselves with kindness, disclose your regrets as a way to make sense of them, and then explicitly draw a lesson from them for what to do next time. And, and I do think that it, the older we get, we know there's a lot of evidence showing that we are better at what's called crystallized intelligence rather than fluid intelligence, something closer to wisdom is, you know, you know if, we, if we blew it earlier and not listening to our regrets, later in life, we should listen to them and act on them while we still have the chance. How about that? Author Daniel Pink saying the best way to deal with regrets is by growing bolder. And he had an interesting take too. He says we need regrets, that all those times that we got it wrong are what push us forward and actually make us better. Well, let's see if we all feel the same way. Guys, can you recall, can you remember going through something that you regretted that made you better moving forward? There were many times uh, in my younger years where I didn't stand up for myself, where I knew I should have, I was always too nice. And I think now when I look back and regret that, I think in my older age, 
that now I do stand up for myself and I know that I can still be nice, but I can still make sure that I speak my truth and that I live in that, you know, that power of making sure that I put myself first. You know, the one that I can think of now is one I learned from Growing Bolder, and it was from our, our colleague Wendy Chioji, who always said to say yes. And that's something I didn't do. You know, I, I was that guy who would come up with a million reasons why it wouldn't work. So I guess yeah. if, if I had any advice for people, I'd say when you get in a life, the best way to avoid the best way to avoid regrets is to get out there and just say yes as often say as yes. you can. <laughs>
but they're desirable because they do mean that we're evolving. Our perspective is changing, we're growing. And life really, when you think about it, is all about learning. And the last great task, uh, the last great lesson in life is learning how to grow older. And regrets are certainly one of our greatest teachers. So think about that and we'll see you next time.